And to be honest with you, I was um, I was disappointed in his demeanor, his condescending attitude, as if I dare you to question me or my school board or my teachers or whatever in any of these these specific areas. The thing that concerns me the most at this point is the erosion of the ability for parents to make decisions for their children. Um, a teacher or a superintendent says that they decide what a, teach, what a child should be taught and that you shouldn't care or protest if that is something that goes against your religion or goes against your fundamental culture or whatever. And I find that to be highly, highly, highly offensive. We have very little tools that we can use with the schools, and we've had disagreements with them over many years over a lot of issues. And uh, while I actually came in today thinking that I, one of my positions, and I've been solid on it for this is my 10th year on the board, is I wasn't elected to run the schools. The school board was elected to run the schools. But I can't tell you how many times over my 10 years on this board how disappointed I've been in their lack of leadership of, of getting involved and, and being able to deal with controversial issues that are out there. So I'm, I'm going to support the resolution. Um, yes, CRT is a very complex issue. Uh, it is dealt <coughs> on the college level and university level and the law school level. It's also very divisive. Uh, somebody I work with who is more inclined to believe it would not think of teaching it because he, it is so nuanced he doesn't feel he knows enough to teach it accurately. Um, and so certainly, and having taught on the university level and K through uh, 8 through 12, there are certain topics you cannot discuss on the K-8 level um, and 8 to 12. And there are certain things you cannot do, or even how you present it on the university level is completely different than what you do on the other levels. Um, it was brought up by some people, so I added it, so I apologize. Um, yes, in some disciplines, most notably the social sciences, like government or poli-sci, theories are taught as theories, like the theories of democracy, elite, pluralist, hyper-pluralist, etc. And there's open debate and discussion, Federalist Papers, Anti-Federalist Papers. Other disciplines, theories are taught as facts. And there we have the problem, because if it's being taught as a fact, that's not the same as it being taught as a theory. And the higher level uh, don't have, um, haven't figured out how they want to cover that. So it's hard to think that a third grade teacher or a middle school teacher or a high school teacher can do that if the colleges haven't figured out. Now let's be clear. <clears throat> there are certain things under the CRT umbrella that are taught as part of curriculums in social studies classes and government classes. And there are legitimate topics to be covered. Jim Crow laws, uh, the Voting Act, uh, Fourth Amendment, the, one of the policy created by Mayor Bloomberg of stop and frisk. Those things can be covered, and the teacher is not talking about CRT. So the, there are certain elements that are certainly fair game to discuss, and if a parent has a question, thanks to coming to our board, because Mr. Snelling put it on our agenda, the superintendent finally said, if you have a concern and you don't feel comfortable on these levels, come to me. And so, but the perception is out there that the CRT is being taught in the schools. And unfortunately in our society, perception is reality. Um, on the element about the pronouns, um, I think the comments made by people today about students feeling awkward about being outed were superb. Uh, the educators that I know and work with um, work, work to create environments that are respectful and understanding. And that is how you create a good working relationship and environment. And if you build that re relationship with your students, they feel better, more comfortable, and they come to you with these issues. Um, before this was fashionable and more known, way back when I was younger and teaching, people felt comfortable in my classroom with many different topics. Um, that is what an educator does. And so the, the language in this resolution does not violate state law. And I had individuals, and I read on the wonderful Facebook, 
people claiming that it violated state law. No, we, many of us fought really strongly to make sure that it was clear we are not violating state law. We can't do that. There's a system of government. We are bound by the Virginia Constitution. And so um, with that said, I will support this resolution for A, because it follows state law. B, because the members of the community have a perception that something is being taught in the school. And all we have had from the superintendent is one sentence about one discipline. And some school board members have said it's not being taught. And that's it. But the community needed to know that. And if bringing this forward brought it to your attention that A, it's not being taught in our school system, and B, if you think it is, there is now a mechanism to handle it, it that has been a blessing. And the third reason I'm doing this is to support our educators. This school year has been tremendously difficult. You have learning losses of different levels for students that the teachers have to deal with. They are teaching hybrid when they thought they'd never see that again because of students who are quarantined. They are teaching multiple lessons. Some teachers are teaching so many classes they have no planning period during a day. So they are doing more work, and yet they are having less time to do it in. On top of that, they have students who are late to work, late to school, <coughs> which is their work, <coughs> through no fault of the students and no fault of the bus drivers and no fault of the educators, but they have to deal with that. And then they had almost a full week of the angst by students and parents and themselves and their family members of a proposed schedule change that they never even gave any input into. On top of all of that stress, they were having parents looking over their shoulders, wondering if every single thing they did was somehow wrapped into CRT. I would have thought the school board might have mentioned that in their comments. I would have thought maybe the superintendent would have thought of the pressure they are putting on these employees. But in, they didn't. So in lack of them caring enough about the educators, somebody has to. And in my opinion, this resolution ensures that we are not putting students in an awkward situation, but we treat them with the respect they deserve. And we treat our educators with the respect and let them do their job, which is to bring these students up into the level they should be that COVID has knocked them away from. And I want to remind the public, you know, we, we are elected to serve you, to serve the students, to serve the parents. And when parents feel that they are not getting the answers from some of their other elected officials in the school side of things, they turn to us and they ask us to look at things because ultimately we are the funding body and the funding mechanism. And it is our responsibility to make sure that your tax dollars are going toward things that you agree with. So I think that was the, one of the, the principles that I wanted to, to make sure that we looked into this and we gave parents a way to bring their concerns forward, as Mr. Cohen said. Now there is a way that parents can bring these concerns forward. Parents are, are aware of the, the CRT issues and they are able to have a path to bring that to the educators and bring that to the superintendent. And if that doesn't work, then obviously they can bring it to the Board of Supervisors. And as Mr. Snelling said, if they were to hire consultants that we didn't agree with, we would now have the ability to take that away from the budget and future budget years. So this resolution doesn't do anything more than that. I know there was a lot of misnomers all over the internet on what this resolution really does. It's not defunding teachers' salaries. It's not doing any of that. So I just wanted to, to reiterate that.